Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm here as promised. I had promised you that I will make a video of all the tips and tricks for the CSS exam that is about to come. So I have actually jotted down a few points which I'll be discussing with you here which actually came to my mind what I had practiced at this time of the year uh, when my exam was about to come. The first thing is that this is a very stressful time and please don't feel left out and don't feel that you're the only person who's going through it. There were a number of subjects I remember at my time when uh, that were untouched at this time of the year. So that's okay. You still have time. Don't freak out. Just give time some time and give yourself some time. If you are very tired and if you're very um, exhausted, please take a stroll, go out for a walk for half an hour, one hour, 45 minutes, any, any uh, time of your liking. Or, you know, listen to a few songs and then go back to studying. Talk to a friend and make a group of people who are actually preparing for CSS so that when you talk, you even have some topics to discuss or, you know, talk about anything. But calm yourself down, however it is. But please make sure that you do not waste a lot of time on that. So just get back to studying as soon as possible. The next, next thing is uh, the first out of all the subjects I'll be discussing is an essay. Well, the first thing about essay is that there are no headings in essay. I don't know, there are some people who do claim that they have cleared the CSS exam with headings, but the international essay writing practices and the essay writing rules say otherwise. They believe that there is no heading on the, uh, in your uh, entire essay. There's just one heading of the outline, and then there's another essay, uh, heading of the essay, E-S-S-A-Y, that heading. And that's all. That is all the headings uh, to be given in your paper. Once you start your introduction, you go down to your conclusion without any headings. Yes, you can add quotations if you know some, but that's not a compulsion. And um, that's it. No headings in the paper, I repeat again. The next thing is that in your English essay paper, they, there is you know a limit of words given. There is 2,500 to 3,000 words. Um, there are 31, 31 lines on one page of your uh, CSS answer sheet. I, I go up to 16 or 17 pages, you know, just write down or get a sheet of paper and write down in one line and see how many words make you can write uh, actually in your one line. Because I have a big handwriting and my words went up to six and a half or seven. So of course it took more pages. If you have a smaller handwriting, of course, that is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to take less pages. So you decide for yourself. But make sure that you do not uh, supersede, exceed the limit from 3000 or, you know, underwrite uh, from 2500. So no underwriting and no overwriting. Stay somewhere in between 25 to 3000 words because when they have given a limit, that means that is the limit without a shadow of doubt. Well, let's move on to next other subjects. Um, there are optionals and there are some compulsory subjects and uh, in each and every question, try to give an introduc introductory para and then try to give a conclusion, the heading of a conclusion when you are about to end your question because that gives an impression that you properly started your question and then you're properly wrapping it up. So uh, just haphazardly ending it somewhere on a random heading means that you might have run out of time or maybe uh, you didn't want to end here but it accidentally did and please uh, put those two lines under your uh, question that ends because we sometimes sift through the rules they have clearly told and clearly mentioned that you need to put those two lines every time you end your question because that would uh, let the checker know and understand that this is where the next question starts i i also wrote the question the whole of the question because it wasn't that lengthy so of course the checker would know that the next question is starting but because the rules say that you have to put a double line under every question please follow that if you can uh, there's no need of putting another margin on your right side they already have a margin on the left and if you even put another margin on the right some people do it's a personal choice but again, it gives an impression that you're trying to shrink your paper so that you can use more sheets and give an impression that you're using a number of sheets so you have a lot of data. But the checker, of course, he knows and he understands and uh, he's been probably checking for a long time. And uh, he would definitely know if your intention is, you know, just to fill sheets. So 
it's better not to put a, a you know a margin on on the right right side of your paper and on the left side there's an already margin made so don't waste your time on these things if you have a good handwriting speed and you still feel like putting a margin there is no buying to it but yes it's better that if you don't do it it's it's better i never put a margin on my my sheets well the next thing is that uh, please add critical analysis in your questions where it fits and critical analysis sounds very fancy but it's a very easy thing it's just the future prediction or you know um uh, the future uh, you know prospects of any topic the positive sides and the negative sides both they make the critical analysis so that need to be focused on and that need to be taken care of so try to put this heading in as many questions as you can next is quotations if you know some good sayings by politicians social workers you know like uh, lady diana mother teresa anyone so put those quotations in your questions if you can next is that you need to use only blue and black marker i have a number of students and i i check a number of papers and they are full of highlighters and they're full of pink colors and you know underlining with different colors and all don't do that in your paper if you know that already that's very good but if you don't this is the point where you learn that the only thing that you you go, going to use either a blue marker or a black marker it can be both as well you can switch between black and blue throughout your paper that's allowed and it can be either a blue pen or a black pen or it can be both pens as per your liking but no other color than this and fpsc clearly prohibits and restricts you from using any other color because that feels like you're leaving a mark on your paper you know to to make your paper stand out and it may be an indication for somebody to know that this is your paper so they were not they're not going to entertain your paper if if it is so try using just black and blue uh the next thing is the length of a question i get this question asked i get asked a number of times ma'am what should be the length of the question and every time i answer that it has to be around you know four to six sheets the next thing that comes to me from my students is that ma'am uh it's about quality and not quantity but it's it's about 20 marks the question that you will be answering is a 20 mark question and of course when it comes to a five five mark question i almost write around you know two maybe one and a half page for that so of course when it comes to 20 it has to reach up to four four and a half or five because the marks demand it they're very very big that's a big score so at least put a data that you know suffices that big score so uh, when i say six pages let me uh, demonstrate they, if for example this is the sheet it's very short, uh, small it's not the small actually um this is one sheet of paper but it has two sides so when i say six i mean uh six sides when i say four i mean four sides one two three four five like this okay so basically three pages and both the sides make six the next thing is that uh do we need to hit the bulls eye directly when we start the question because that is how you start you know with a bang and you need to tell the checker that you know the answer so yes and no equally I never started a question you know by hitting the bull's eye but there are people who actually do their questions like that and that's totally fine so what I did was I started with an introduction defining the topic I you know built up my arguments and then went down to the conclusion so um I actually slowly and steadily built my topic and I actually hit the bull's eye somewhere in my in the at the end of my first page or maybe the start of the second page so then I stayed streamlined after that you can choose either way you can just start by hitting the bull's eye or build up your argument 